Hey guys, welcome to TCR. Sid here. I see you guys are talking about the apocalypse and my camera seems like it's in a weird place. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. Sorry, it's not, it's not cooperating. I feel like I'm way, way, way weird here. Like it's, that's better a little bit, maybe. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. You can't, there's one thing I don't like about lives is you can't adjust the camera really because you can't see what it's seeing until you get in here. So if you have, if you're not doing it from a phone, it's really hard to tell what's going on. So uh, I'm Sid. I think I said that already. Um, it has been a long week, guys. Let me tell you. It's just been a long week. It's been one of those weeks where every day felt like Monday, including today. You know? Mm. Hey, hey, we got Steve. What up, what up? We got Pole Barn Productions. We got Robin's Vibes and DIYs. David Payne. We got the Doug, the other Doug. Here we go. <laughs> we got Doug, the guitarist. Right on. Steve C. Hey, guys. So, hey, Toby from Temecula, our neighbors to the, that way. Um. <laughs> I know, Gunga, it's 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 Groundhog's Day all over again. It it does feel it does feel kind of like that. It's just I'm telling you, our internet has been up and down for over a month. It's been like a month and a half. And I finally yesterday officially got it fixed. Like it's actually working now, like steadily. Knock on wood. Um <laughs> so that's fantastic. Um, super, super, super stoked that that's actually working. Cause that was starting to really be like, you know, video wouldn't upload and it would disconnect me when I was trying to like do stuff on here. And I was just like, Oh my God, come on. You know, so frustrating. Um, but you know, we got that working and then we've had some crazy wind storms this week and like 80 degrees. What? It's like, it's insane. It's like, uh, it's not quite Santa Ana winds. It's like it almost, I don't know any of you have ever been to California or heard anything in a, like a show or whatever, people talking about Santa Ana winds. Um, there are these really strong, dry winds that usually we get during like fire season, which is like a thing out here. Um, and usually fire season is kind of over by like, the end of October, beginning of November. But this year, it's like it's back. Luckily, again, no fires because we've had rain and stuff in between. So it's not too bad, but it's definitely like, I mean, whew, you know, it's crazy. Oh my goodness. You grew up in East County, right on, right on. Hey, two old people on a couch, Mark and Debbie, what's crack a lacking? What's crack a lacking? Global warming at work. Yeah, maybe. Eh, I don't know. James Martin wants to know if I've ever gone hunting. I have actually never gone hunting. I have gone uh, like target shooting um, and I have definitely dispatched my fair share of animals, but I have never had to hunt one uh, and try to catch it other than like when one of mine get out and I have to catch it. But then I'm using like non-lethal method methods, of course, because I'm trying to get it back into captivity. Um but yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Hunting doesn't really like I see like the benefit of it in a situation where you need to be hunting because, you know, the share shelves are bare and, you know, all that. Um, but I've never gone hunting. I've never. <laughs> Mark and Debbie say you've never gone to a bar <laughs> in my younger days. That's where I did. I guess I did do a little bit of trophy hunting. I managed to snag Mike 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, never actually gone hunting. I've done fishing. Um, I've done quite a bit of fishing. Um, but no, no hunting. I, I don't know. I just, I've never felt the, the need to like go hunting. Like it's not one, like I'll do it at some point. I'm sure. I just, it's never come up oddly enough. Mike's gone only a handful of times since we've been together, um, and gotten some deer. Um, and he's done some like, uh, sea fishing out on a boat and stuff a few times with some of his buddies, but yeah, no, not a lot of hunting. It's just not, you know, 
we're not in an area that's really conducive to that. You really have to like go to go hunting. I think if we lived in a space where it was more readily available, it would be probably something that we did a lot more frequently because Mike does enjoy it and I would give it a try. I might really love it. I probably would. I like getting my own meat. I like firearms. I don't see why I wouldn't enjoy the process. So it's, it, I should probably add it to my to-do list. You know, I probably should. Using a rifle would make that easier. <laughs> Going hunting, yes. I have a few of those somewhere that I did. I don't know. I might have lost them in a boating accident. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, see, the pole barn production says he hunts in his backyard. I would love to be able to do that. I would love to be able to do that uh, for sure. I, I, I could get down with that. You know, yeah, that's true. Ted says you can you can hunt at Camp Pendleton was out that's out by like Oceanside. Um, you know, I don't know. I feel like well, Mike's real picky too. He doesn't like the little mule deer we have out here. You got to go a little further out if you want to get like axes and like you know real decent venison. Um, then other than just the you know the runts we have that are around here. <laughs> so crazy boat accidents, you know, the ones where you lose all your, your weapons and ammunition. Sometimes that happens, you know, there's a lot more in Northern California. That's right, Steve. Yeah. Northern California, there's a lot more foresty areas, you know, where we are, there's a lot of mountains and a lot of deserts and then the ocean. You know, there's not a lot of deer hanging out on the coast, you know, it's just, you know, Oh, yeah. Well, I've done that. Does that count addictive? I mean, I've, I've, I've done a little bit of that. Um, but I don't know if that really counts. As, I, mean, I, guess it, I guess it counts. I guess it counts. Why not? You know, addicted says he hunted for his keys and casinos. Yes, that's true. If you go, yeah, North, North County, there's a lot of casinos. That's true. Very true. So, yeah, so that's kind of what's been going on. Um, Steve says the goat got out again. Bang, I got it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, it wouldn't work that way. Not very well anyway. But yeah, I got, well, speaking of my goats, I got Caroline's pretty darn close to kidding. Um, again, she's starting to fill out. She's starting to bag up a little bit. She's starting to get, you know how they get that little indentation where they kind of start to sink in. Her appetite's changed. Um, so yeah, she's, she's getting closer. I suspect I think we got a few more weeks though before she's ready to officially pop. Um, I think she needs a couple more weeks, but we're we're getting close. We're getting close. So, <laughs> so today, uh, besides all that that's been going on, it's just total craziness. You know, just trying to kind of you know tie things up and get things ready, obviously to go um, on the trip. You know, getting all my reservations squared away and our plane tickets for shoot dang fast, which I'm so excited about. Um, it's so great to like, you know, go out and see everybody there and meet some other channels and some people that watch the channels and just kind of, just kind of mingle. And, you know, it's fun to kind of be able to like, you know, shout each other out and like, just sort of, you know, make friends in the YouTube community. And Jason was talking about that a little bit the other day on one of, I forget what video it was or which channel of his it was. I think it was the coffee with the crockers. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just kind of <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Lundy, Lundy. Um, <laughs> Hey, John, cold beer ranch. What's up? Ooh, a Louisiana hunt with, uh, for wild hog. That could be interesting. Right on. Ooh, William says that they, in Central California, they have an orchard there with 20 acres and the ranches around us, there's 500 to 1,000 deer, lots of deer, he says. Frankie can be the DD. Would I miss something? Oh, when you mean when I go to, well, she's not, she can't drive quite yet when we go to Oklahoma. She is excited to go though. So 
<laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Thank you. Sam, I am with a $20 super chat <laughs> for my summer attire fund. I love it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, you know, just been trying to kind of get that sort of squared away. I had to get us some, um, some suitcases so that it's because the, the one that I took last time barely made it. It was technically too big, apparently, but they let me squeak on by. Um, and then Frankie needed one, so to for the carry on so it's like we gotta do it gotta do it but um anyway what was i gonna talk about youtube see i'm very scatterbrained this week this whole week oh it's been this oh and then i had to have a plumber come out that was the other thing that happened one of the toilets backed up and uh i i don't know if something like i don't know what happened because it was fine and then all of a sudden it wasn't and there wasn't anything how to be delicate about this there was nothing apocalyptic that happened. The only thing I could think of is maybe some of the cleaning chemical got a little too intense for it and it got angry and too much water got put in it. It's the only thing I could think of, um, which is possible. Um, so anyway, I did everything. I snaked the drain. I went into town to try to see if I could get a toilet auger. I put this special stuff that's supposed to help break down clogs. It's like good for your septic tank, basically like that Ridex stuff, the live microorganisms. And it helped, but it didn't fix it completely. And I plunged it 5,000 times. And I mean, I did everything short of taking the, the, the toilet off of the thing and like going down into the pipe and up through the bottom. Like I did everything, right? Bless this guy's heart. Plumber comes out. I call that morning. He's there that later, like late afternoon. It was like four, I want to say it was like four o'clock by the time he showed up. And I show him the problem. First thing he does, takes the plunger. He did this thing. I've never, and I'm telling you, this was a hack, man, because this worked. So he took the plunger and he like went like this, like really, really fast with it, which I know looks dirty, but you know, you know. Um, and it immediately went down. And I'm like, I, I looked at him and I go, I feel like an idiot. I go, I plunged it a hundred times. My husband tried. I go, normally I can get it unstuck. He goes, I've been doing this for a long time. And I just have this one technique and it always works. And I was like, you're a miracle man. So <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Something like that. So yeah, my tattoos are real. Yep. That's accurate. I'm not wearing a, not wearing a fake tattoo sleeve. Nope. Um, so I was like, thank God. And I felt so, I was so relieved that he was able to fix it. And they have this thing where they don't charge you unless they do work. And he was like, he kind of was like, we were chatting and he was like, well, you know, this toilet's not that old, but you could replace it if you wanted to, because this is slightly older model and they make ones that are more efficient and have more suction now. And he's like going through his spiel. And I'm like, I really don't. I don't feel the need for that right now. And he's like, well, is that all you needed? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, do I owe you something? Because they have this thing unless they like, you know, really do something that you don't pay them. Like they don't charge you anything. So I was like, I feel bad. I'm like, I feel like I need to give you something. So me being me, I was like, I'll give you a chicken. And I like run to the freezer and I get him one of our chickens. And I'm like, I just have to give you something. I can't let you leave and not give you something because you seriously like I was expecting this to be like oh we have to sneak the drain oh there's something wrong oh it's going to be five hundred dollars because I had tried everything and so I was just so relieved I was just and he was like tickled pink that I gave him a chicken so it was a win-win but I was like I had to like give him something I couldn't just let him leave like empty-handed I was like and he was like because at first when I said I'm going to give you a chicken he looked at me like I was a little crazy which I, I realized that out of context, somebody just saying to you, I'm going to give you a chicken would be weird. But in my brain, it's totally normal because I do this sometimes. So I, and I had to like clarify that it was like a processed bird that we raised and butchered. And then he was like, oh, okay. Like, I don't know if he thought I was just going to whip out a live chicken and like a pair of handcuffs. I don't know what he was thinking. Um, but he hopefully enjoyed the chicken. So, 
but yeah. Hey, MT Homestead is in the house. Sorry, I was jibber jabbering and I missed I missed some chats there. I know, addicted. Yeah, there's that is definitely an issue that like and with the septic tanks and all of that. Luckily, knock on wood, we've never had an issue. We're very careful what we put in there, what kind of toilet paper we use. I do the septic tank um, microbe thing treatment. You know, I try to keep everything happy, happy, happy. Um, we, yeah, that's true, Jeff. I mean, technically, I don't know. Like, I guess, I mean, I guess I consider myself a country person. I mean, I grew up in Southern California. It's not very country. We do have a lot of rural areas. Um, but you know, I grew up down the hill in the city, so I didn't grow up with chickens that I would give to people. You know, I grew up with my mom making chicken in the microwave from raw to cooked in the microwave. I thought I didn't like chicken until I was like older because you really should not cook chicken that way. It's pretty nasty. I do not recommend cooking chicken in the microwave, but you know, in, in the early 1980s, when I was a little kid and the microwave thing was brand new, that was like cooked everything in the microwave. You cannot put a chicken breast in the microwave raw, put a little oregano on it, and cook it in the, in the microwave. It is the worst, worst chicken you'll ever have in your life. I promise you that. I promise you, don't do it. Don't do it. It's nasty. But anyway, so I gave the guy a chicken and sent him on his way. So... It was just a very interesting week for me. Um, so gave a plumber a chicken. They finally fixed my internet. I had like, I don't even know how many people out here are fixing the internet this week, replacing stuff, doing that. Just, you know, hotmess.com express out here. So come on, Homestead and David, what's going on? My goodness. I'm like the city woman from Green Acres. That's probably fairly accurate. I'm a little bit like, I'm a little bit like that. Yeah. I always sort of think of myself a little bit like I think Dolly Parton is my spirit animal a little bit because she's always got to be put together and like, you know, likes her girly stuff. But she strikes me as the type that's not really afraid to like go play in the pig pen either. So I think that's probably I think she's my spirit animal. <laughs> Boiled chicken's gross. I agree, but I would prefer boiled chicken to chicken cooked in the microwave. Let me just tell you, microwave chicken is disgusting. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly what I use is Red X. Um, cakes of yeast. Oh, I've never even seen those as an option. I'll have to look into that, Gunga. Um, oh, you got three chicks hatched in the incubator right now. Half I am Sarami. What, what's the other half? Those are my favorite. Well, you, you might know that. I, I know I talked about it in a video or two. I have one. I have one girl, Viola, who's an I am Sarami, which I know, I know I'm not saying it right. I've never said it right. It's that Indonesian chicken. They're all black. Their faces are black. Their eyes are black. Everything's black. Their beak, their feathers, their skin, everything. But they lay a white egg. And they are the coolest birds. They're the coolest looking birds, I think. They're really neat. Um, I've been tempted to get myself a roux so I could I could breed them separately, but I'm like, eh, I'm not really, I don't know if there's enough of, right now there's kind of more of a market of it. There, You know, that's what happens too, is certain areas, things kind of get really uh, popular and then everybody has them and then it kind of floods the market and then it's impossible to sell them, even if you started out being the only one that did it. So it gets a little tricky. Good old Dolly, you gotta love her, right? Yeah. Air fryer chicken, I'd give a try. I don't think I've done any chicken in the air fryer. I were really like I've really done I've done potatoes in the air fryer. And I've done my garbanzo bees in the air fryer. I feel like there was something else I made in the air fryer. I can't remember what it was. I always forget that we have an air fryer. It's not something, it's one of those kitchen gadgets that like I forget we have it. And so I don't use it because I forget about it. Like I don't think. So sometimes, and I'll do this with my pressure cooker, my Instapot, I'll be like, okay, I have this, this, and this, and I'll look up Instapot recipes for X, Y, and Z, and go go at it that way. Um, but Mike's home, by the way. He's just, he's 
uh, avoiding you all. I'm just kidding. He's getting his beer. <laughs> but yeah. So not sure the other half. Majestic Marana or Bard Rock. Oh, that would be interesting. Too many heads in with him. Yeah, see, that's that's right, Terry. It's hard to tell sometimes. I've got a few mutts running around because of that. I, you know, I like a good barnyard mix. You know, say what you will about them, but I like a good barnyard mix. Chicken. They're they're fun. I like to see it's like uh it's like playing Dr. Right. Frankenstein. No, thank you. It's like playing Dr. Frankenstein, you know, kind of like putting all the pieces together and having a good old time. Chicken breasts are good in the air fryer. I know I keep seeing recipes. Like if I scroll through TikTok, I guess I've liked one too many air fryer recipes on there, which none of which I've tried, but I saw one the other day for a shrimp thing that looked really good in the air fryer that I might have to investigate. And then swivel, swivel, pivot. There we go. So now that Mike's here and I've been jibber jabbering about. I've been here. Giving chickens away. Yeah, but now you're here, here. Giving chickens away and random things to put in the air fryer. Um, Anybody in here I know? Come on. Come on. We know people. Empty Homestead. Um, Doug the Guitar. Empty Homestead. Yep, all the peoples. You know all the peoples, right? Don't you? So. Pole Barn. Yeah. So how hard is it? to start a YouTube channel. Cause I know a lot of people, I, I've had a lot of people ask about, you know, oh, I've been thinking about doing a channel, but I just don't know where to start or I don't know what to do or I'm scared to do it. Um, so I thought we'd just take a few minutes today during our live. Um, and I don't, I'm not gonna get too like, I don't know, too nerdy into it, into like- I will. He will. But I'll nerd. He'll nerd out and you all will enjoy that. But, <laughs> But honestly, now I did not start our channel. He did. Um, I never really watched YouTube. I was not somebody that gravitated towards it. I think uh, over the last few years, obviously I've gotten more and more involved in the channel. Right. To the point now where I'm shooting the majority of the content and editing pretty much all the content at this point. And it's, I've definitely got my, my hands in it more than I ever did before. Um, and it was definitely intimidating at first when he was like, you're doing the editing now. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I had to figure it out. Um, but. So since you picked this title. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that you have a couple of key points you want to hit yeah. for people that are thinking about starting a channel. Yeah. So we're, we're, go ahead. Because I have things. I mean, I you picked this title and I have things that. that I was, you know. Go ahead then. No, I'm, I'm just saying. You, uh, uh, and instead of talking about what we do now, let's talk about what would we do if we were going to start a channel right now, right? Okay, go ahead. Get a camera. Yeah, step one, get a camera. No, seriously, go ahead. What were you going to say? I, I just, I mean, I, I think if you're, if you want to start a YouTube channel, you, the first thing you need to do is have a business plan. You don't just like randomly say, I'm going to, I'm going to make a YouTube channel and um, let's see, what should it be about? Well, what's popular right now? No, uh, you're already, you're already going to fail. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you, if you want to start a YouTube channel, it needs to be about something you're already passionate about. Something that you don't mind putting a bunch of effort into because it's a lot more effort to shoot something for a YouTube channel than it is to just do it. Like I have, a whole bunch of plant stuff in there that I need to do, but I'm actually holding off until we can shoot it. And then we have to, you know, make this whole production of shooting it so that we have content rather than just go and do the thing. Right. So, I mean, anybody that thinks that they're going to like, and then, it, yeah, and then it's like, anytime you're doing something like that, you have to anticipate it's going to take twice as long for you to complete the task because you're filming it. Right. So everything is like, it's going to take me this long, at least twice as long. You know? Right. Right. And and planning things out, you, you you plan it differently if you're trying to use it as content than if you were just if you just needed to do it. You know, like I was driving home today and I was thinking, you know, after we get done with our live, um, I've got a whole bunch of bok choy and lettuce and things that can tolerate the cold 
that I need to plan outside. And then I thought, I can't because I have this whole video that I still haven't shot that I need those still in their seed starter trays in order to shoot. So, you know, just planning what you're going to do changes. So, and, and you really need to think about all those things. Uh, you know, just, just starting a YouTube channel. Anybody can start a YouTube channel. You just log in, open, start an account. And yeah, but like, I think, yeah, I think, I think the thing is too, like people get intimidated by it and it, because of, well, I can't do that. Nobody's going to watch it or whatever. And you, you might have some screw ups in the beginning or some things may not go as smoothly as you like in the beginning, but you know, I think going into it, you got to just kind of thinking about like, okay, what do I want then? Like even just something basic, like the name of your channel, like, do I want this to be my, my brand, my name on here? Um, and what's going to go along with that. And then kind of going from there and thinking like, you know, what kind of content, like from, from what's my range of content going to be from here to here, from here to here on the scale of if you're doing homesteading, for example, like, am I only doing cooking and canning? Am I doing farming too? Am I doing raising animals and gardening? Like what scope are you trying to, to show? I feel like I should be writing some of these down so I can come back and hit them. There's some people making, making some good comments here that, um, that we should talk about. Right. Um, what, one of them, Jonathan Young, hire a production team. You know what? Yes, but you can't, you know, right. uh, when you get to the point where you can, you certainly should. Um, come on, was talking about be prepared to work, work, work. Yeah. Reality, it's a lot of work yeah. and you have to be prepared to do a lot of work. Don't think for a second that I'm gonna throw a couple of videos out there, they're gonna go viral, I'm gonna make a million dollars and you know buy a McLaren. I mean, it might happen, but the odds Probably are not. not in your favor. Right. Right. But, and that's just true, true with anything. Like you have to, you know, and sometimes people think, oh, like, oh, you know, they look at somebody's channel and they go, oh, they're so lucky their channel's doing well. Or, you know, oh, I, w I wish I could do that, but I can't do that. Well, you can do it, but I guarantee you that that person put in some hard work. They put right. it, they spent the time and the hours planning out their videos, figuring out what they're going to film, getting the shots, editing it and putting it together in an entertaining and informative way. I mean, it, all of that is, it takes time, you know? Take your take your snipe hunting and video it. <laughs> I know what snipe tried to hide hunting that. is. How do I make it show? Because anything with okay. hunting, it's like oh. lagging it. Yeah. Um, so somebody was talking about, you know, um, get them with clickbait and then keep them with content. 100%. I hate that word clickbait, but you guys need to understand that clickbait. It's is, judging the book by the cover. It's a real thing in, in, everywhere in marketing, yeah. you know? And clickbait can simply mean. Um, have a captivating image that leaves a question mark that someone wants to click on to get the answer to the question. And then look, your content needs to be good. You should always be improving your content. Some content can only be to. so good, <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, depending on what you're, what you're shooting or talking about, you know, if I'm, if I'm shooting a video like the one I'm going to shoot tonight after this about plants, Look, my audience is going to be awake. small. I mean, my audience is going to be small. The, the people that are going to watch that video are people that want the specific content that's in that video. And the reality is not all your videos can be popular. Like, w wouldn't we love that? But but that, they're just not going to be. I mean, I could make a I could come up with a real cheesy clickbaity image and trick people into watching that video. But then they bounce so quickly that the YouTube algorithm would figure it out. Right. So you, the last thing you want to do is trick people into watching something. Right. Um, you got to follow through in the first right. little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, I want a McLaren too, but actually right. I don't. Exactly. Come on home setting says that it took him a few months to come up with his name. He had to think of something that was cool and that was really good for branding and really help it take off. And that's exactly right. Like, honestly, looking back, like I wish we would have thought of something better other than just the name of our farm. <laughs> like, Oh, but, if know. I had it to, to, to do over, we would not have named our channel the craft ranch. Yeah. Like, but that's a lot of times now. I mean, that's why I started going TCR right. just to give it a little something, something, which I think has helped a little bit in some, in some ways, maybe, I don't know, but so Robin's buys and DIYs, I heard it's not 
good to do clickbait because the view gets shorter. So that's what I'm talking about. Uh, clickbait. Every it, thumbnail it is be, clickbait. Yeah, it can't be false advertising clickbait. Right. It needs to be genuine Correct. clickbait. It needs to be something that you're going to actually deliver on versus like if I show you a picture of me like this with Mike in the thumbnail and then all I'm doing is making lasagna. Right. And it doesn't make sense. Right. You know what I mean? It has to it has to go together. It has to represent what you're doing. If I'm throwing the pan in his face, that would be something. To, I think we should try that. Right. Throw a pan in your face with lasagna now. But now I want lasagna. So now I don't know. Anyway, I got off track. I must be hungry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think if I was going to start a channel today, I would, first of all, I would sit down and I would think about, you know, what, what am I passionate about? And what, what is my, what do I want my channel to be? If I'm a welder or if I'm a, a knife maker, or if I'm, you know, uh, whatever I am, it's easy because I'm going to make it about that. Um, but if you're just your average person that doesn't have a, a, a real strong passion about something that's obvious to be, you know, that's the thing, then start looking at what things do you wish you had time to have a passion about, right? What things, maybe, maybe it's, you know, Maybe you're one of those girls that likes to order things online that are like, oh, like knockoffs of the celebrity clothing, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's literally a channel about that. Uh, Daryl Ives is someone who I watch a lot of. You should write that down if you're thinking about having a channel. Daryl Ives is a guy who devotes his online presence to helping people grow their YouTube channels. And one of the videos I was watching of him, he was actually interviewing this girl who like, that's what she does. And I was like, wow, that's a channel. Literally anything could be a channel. Yeah. I mean, you could make a channel about tasting all the beers of the world. Mm -hmm. And somebody, people will watch it. And you will find your audience. Yeah, it's all, and it comes down to how you market it, how you advertise it, how you do the thumbnail, how you do the title and all that. You know, come on saying, yeah, editing is key because you could give the same, you could take 10 different people the same clips and they would put together something completely different, each one of them. And I, it's true. Like, I mean, I've there's been footage that I had done that he ended up editing and I was like, I would not have put it together like this at all. This is totally not what I was picturing, but okay, it works. Like, it it is it's, it's you get your own little kind of groove in editing and i i have my weird little things that i do and he has his weird little things that he does when he edits um i like editing i didn't at first it took me a while to warm up to it it was very intimidating at first and i think it is for a lot of people i think that's for most people the editing process is probably the part that is the most daunting and it's so important and it is it is important because you're never good enough at editing yeah i mean we will never be good enough at editing, neither will anyone right. who has a channel. I mean, because it doesn't matter what the content is, how it's edited has everything to do with how long you keep somebody. And people on YouTube, you guys, us, me, when I'm on YouTube, when I'm searching a recipe, when I'm searching how to play a song, you know, whatever it is, like when I click on that video, if I'm not engaged, if I'm not feeling it, I'm going to the next one. Like this dude doesn't even know how to play guitar. Why is he trying to teach me this song? You know, or maybe his audio is bad and I, you know, maybe his lighting's bad. Maybe he edited it in a way that I can't see his fingers. And I'm like, man, whatever it is, think about what you would want to see, what would keep you engaged and keep striving to be better and better and better at that because you could edit the craziest ridiculous concept watching grass grow you could edit that into a four or five minute video that people would watch or like you know staining a house like you could if you're good at editing and you're creative you can um well, and that's something the shooting too you got to think about you got to think about it as you're shooting it at, like you're laying it out and editing it so that you can think of like what shot would I want here what what would I want to show here so that you can build it out that way you know yeah come on um 
I, I don't know. I think we would we would potentially give up the editing someday if we could afford to and we could like if we could have a rapport with the person obviously if you're hiring them you get to have expectations so um you, you know you you meet with them and and they need to have a you know a creative mind that's similar to yours i mean if we could afford it i'd hire a producer and like a couple of camera people and an editor i mean Heck yeah, I, I totally would. Yeah, I think when you've grown it, like if you grow your channel to that point where it's really its own thriving entity, you almost have to take it to that next level to keep it getting improving. Because that's the idea is that you want it to keep improving and getting better and getting better. And you can't focus on your in front of the camera stuff and your content if you're so, you know, it does kind of split your brain a little bit because you're you're the on-camera personality. You're the behind the camera you know, director and producer and editor, and it gets to be a lot. Yeah, Dick, did I, I've looked into that site that you can send your content to and they edit it for you. Um, it's, they have such a boiler plate. I'm not going to say anything bad about it. I'm just going to say that even though they might do a better job in some areas than we do because of their, just their skill level, uh, I don't think it would have the soul that it has when she edits it right. and because it's, you know, it's, it, it's just a boilerplate concept of, of how they do it. And I'm just not impressed with what I've seen. I think it's, it is what it is. And, and uh, the only way we would hire out the editing is if we could meet the person, get to know them and like have an agreement on the creative juices, if you will, uh, because there's so much of the soul of the thing in the editing, right. you know? Well, and then it would still have to be a thing like they send you the first draft and you're like, yes, no change. Like you have to be able to say like final stamp of approval, basically, I, I would think because. Come on, has got a date. You know. All right. Whoop, whoop. All right. All right. All right. Well, you go. You go. And remember, hold the door for her, pull out her chair. Don't put roofies in her drink. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and then <clears throat> once you have, okay, so you've got your, you've got your concept and, and you want to, you kind of want to, you want to stick to it. All right. You don't want one video one week to be about homesteading uh, or farming. And then a video the next week about, um, you know, reviewing properties. Right. I mean, totally in a different genre all together um, if you're doing kind of like a doc you follow about your family you can get away with you have a lot of latitude like we do videos when we're on vacation right. and we because uh you know I, I feel like well a lot of what we do is about farming um i think we kind of go along that doc you follow concept um <laughs> come on homesteading says it's 2022 she's pulling out my chair right <laughs> comedy i love it come on all right whoop, whoop. yeah i don't think they charge 20 bucks a video because i looked into a couple of these and it was going to be it was going to be a couple hundred bucks for like a like a 10 minute video and uh the other thing some of you guys may not realize uh is you don't make a lot of money on youtube for a long 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 time um i mean the number of subscribers that you have means nothing it actually in no way factors into what you make and youtube doesn't pay you anything no one gets paid no, that's not true um the There's super something. chats yeah. and um uh when people watch your video who have subscribed to youtube uh red or whatever it's called um then then you do get a little bit of revenue from youtube but the majority of the revenue that you get is from a third party that also pays YouTube and it's all about the ads it's from AdSense and it's all about the ad revenue. So, um, you know, in order to make money from ad revenue, people have to watch ads, which means that not only do you have to get a lot of views on the video, but they have to watch it long enough. You have to have that, that view duration, right? Um, so, None of that has anything to do with the number of subscribers. You could get tons of people watching your videos 
and watching the ads and not subscribing to your channel and you would still make money as long as you meet the minimum number of subscri subscribers in order to monetize. I'm so. to hit the wrong button. I hope I didn't just remove somebody that I didn't mean to, but I don't know what happened. I was trying to... I don't know. We have no moderators in here right No, we now. do. What are you talking about? Well, ask them if you... <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Did that robot just wake up? Okay. So... So Rosie, my little Roomba that goes around and terrifies him. I Lately, can't stand that Roomba. I don't know what happens, but now every once in a while, randomly, she'll just start talking. And I guess she like she died over in the corner over there, and I just hadn't put her back on the charger. And so she just randomly woke up and told me that she's having an error. <laughs> oh yeah, pull barn to the moderator. Yeah. Okay. Told you. Oh, they're not jerks. They're freedom fighters. Up there in Canada. I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at them. I can't I can never get mad at a freedom fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I probably could. They could probably do something I get mad at. Yeah. But, maybe. Yeah. So um I'm curious if anybody's got any questions like about I mean, look, we've been we've been doing YouTube now for how long? Um years. Three years, three years, four years. I mean, years. we I, I would say we really kind of Really steadily doing it for two. Yeah. Like really we like. We were doing it, it for a couple of years before that, but we were like, yeah, whatever. It hey, was, let's like, shoot a YouTube video. Yeah. It, he would, and like, I wasn't really involved that much and he would just be like, okay, we're going to shoot something and we'd post something. And then like a month would go by and we wouldn't post anything. Right. Like it, we were not really committed to it. Yeah. Well, I think we've been really committed to it since just like, no, no, more than two years because the pandemic's been going on for two years. Oh, that's true. Well, yeah. Probably since 2019. Yeah, it was 2019 when I took over the channel. That's true. Yeah. When you were like, here, you do it. So, you know, probably a good solid three years. Yeah. Um, so, I, I would say consistency. Yes, you I know? named the robot Rosie because the Jetsons. <laughs> of course. What else would I name her? That's just logic. And I saw David, I don't know if he's still in here, Dave. David Dean Sellers um, was asking about the port this weekend because we're having friends over. Yes. So we're going to try it this weekend. We've been saving it because I have this one friend that really likes wine a lot. And she's coming. Heather and Jane are coming too. Okay. Um, so she's coming up. So um, I'm, and she, when it, she was here the day it got shipped, but we were already drinking other stuff and we're like, oh, we'll save this next time you're over. And then they haven't been over. So now she's coming over. So we're going to. That but anyway, so I don't know if anybody has questions or like thoughts or something about like kind of just you know it's it's one of those things too where like when you when you put yourself out there on YouTube, there's a certain amount of like you see what you see is what you get, and there's a certain amount of like opening yourself up to it and just kind of putting your personality out there and hoping that people don't hate your guts right off the bat. And you're gonna have um, you're, gonna you're gonna have, have lovers them. and haters. You're gonna get them both. And you can't you, you can't you can't really get too bent out of shape when somebody's hating on you because you put yourself out there on the internet. Yeah. And there's people that's all they do. Yeah. They just go on the internet it's and hate. It's like it you know, it, it blows my mind the hate that we get on the one video about you know the right tool to dispatch, dispatch a hog, yeah. whatever it is. You know, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I got passed around the PETA network or something. I don't know, but we got <laughs> well no, let's let's just that that video is a great video to use as an example for talking about starting a channel for somebody. Okay. So that video is about a controversial subject. Ding. It has a controversial thumbnail. Her and Daisy Duke shorts holding a gun, pointing it at a pig's head. Ding, right? It is short and I think mildly entertaining enough to keep people interested. We tried to make we tried to make a little fun, not make fun of, but we tried to make a little fun of the question, which was, what's the right tool? What do you use to kill a hawk? Right? Yeah. In, in this the most humane, right. efficient, effective. So we're like, right. hey, let's yeah. shoot a short video about this and let's 
let's get some of the wrong tools out and show them off and then and explain why. Some people what. got it and loved it and thought it was great. And other people were like, why would you even show that? Right. Like, that was the point. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know so you're always going to get people that don't get your humor or don't get your vision from what you're trying to do. Oh, that's okay, man. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> I remember checking my phone every hour. So do I. I do. I remember checking my phone every hour when we finally started getting some videos, getting some views. And I was like, where are we at right now? Ooh, we, we 4,000 views today. I was like I was losing like, my okay. mind. He's right? walking around the house telling me every five minutes. And yeah. I'm like, I don't look at it now. I'm like, okay. I mean, I, I look at it probably uh, once a day. I'll go into the analytics and look and see if anything specific you have an idea of what videos are being viewed, what video is kind of taken off today by what videos are getting commented on. You Robin know? says she got 25,000 uh, views on a video about a toma roasted tomato sandwich, but mainly it was because the, the tomato was not toasted. So they like, they got like, they got on her, I guess, about it. <laughs> That's, That's funny. It kind of went a little viral. That's funny. People were outraged. That's yeah. funny. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. But you know what? Even outraged. Outraged people are good. Like all those people that are mad at us, mad at, 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 mad at us, that are mad at us about that video, are good for the algorithm. Yeah, They're engaging it's, it's in the so, video. Yeah, social channel you know? engagement. So I always laugh because it's like, and then you know you get people like you know you guys that like us. That Creepy Bushman gave us a out. shout out. Oh, you did. Whoop, right whoop. on. Thank you. Whoop, Appreciate whoop. it. Whoop. Thank you. Gotta love that. Right? Come on. Yeah. Well, we're gonna give Creepy Bushman a shout out on a on a on a real video too. The on lives real video. the lives don't like, real lives don't count. Our lives don't get that many views, so I don't really count them as um you know, and I don't know why. It's it's weird. Um we have a particular crowd of people that enjoy watching our videos. Some of the people in our genre get more people watching their lives. Yeah. And, and I Maybe it's just because they've been doing the lives longer consistently and than, than us, but whatever. I, I enjoy, I've come to enjoy the lives. Um, it's, it's an opportunity to actually engage with some people that you, you see people comment on your videos and they're just a name, right? And a comment. And maybe if you see the same person comment a few times on a few videos, you feel like maybe you, have an idea of their mindset about something but they're still not they're still not somebody that you physically really engaged with well, and that's what's cool about the meetups too is because you can kind of put some names to faces and thumbnails and whatever like it's it's you know it's kind of it's kind of neat to to have that like oh okay i know who this person is like i get it you know but, but yeah i mean it's you know, people, you know, and it's like, yeah, people, people don't understand sometimes. It's like, there's a certain amount of like this part of you that obviously you're going to talk a certain way. You're going to do things a certain way because you're demonstrating it. You're trying to show to potentially anybody out there that happens to click on it, you know? So it's just like when you exit your home, you act a certain way, right? right. So it's just, I don't know. There's a certain amount of like some people will don't connect with you or whatever because it is hard it's like a one-sided thing you're like talking to a camera it's like it can feel a little weird at first you but, know you know for me one of the cool things about a live i think is that it keeps us honest or or shows you that we are who we are i guess i'm not sure if i'm wording that correctly but live and unedited. right like when you're watching a yeah, video of us doing something out there, you know, processing chickens or playing on the tractor, or whatever. If you're watching that video, you know, like I said, we shot that video. We we purposefully shot that video. Parts of that video were set up, you know, on purpose. Um, and parts of that video happened as they happened. And parts of that video, we were like, oh, that was cool. Do it again so we can get it on camera. Right. And then it was edited. But when you so so when you're watching those kinds of videos, you, you don't know how real it is. I mean, you know, we went through that whole process with a production company um, a couple of years ago, and I, it became very clear to me that a lot of what you watch on TV, 
even the people, the even the people <laughs> that were in it didn't know what the episode was going to look like, right? right? It, it's very scripted, all the unscripted stuff out yeah. there. It's very, very, very tightly wound. And the only person who knows, has any idea of what the episode is going to look like in the end is the producer. And even then things change in the editing room. But when we do a live, when people do lives, like I show up to a live, I don't even know what the title is. Like I'm driving home and she, she decides what the title is going to be. She's been thinking about it for a day or two. She has an idea in her head. We haven't talked about it because we're busy and we're talking about other things when we have time to talk. And then I pop in to this live and it's like, okay, cool. That's what we're talking about. So I just feel like they're, they're, unless people think that this is all scripted and there's a, a screen right over there. That we're Joe Bidening it right. right now off the teleprompter. Then we're not stuttering nearly right. for that. When you watch somebody do a live, chances are you're seeing the real them. And hopefully we'll slightly edit it because I don't cuss as much on a live as I do in real life. She cusses like a sailor. A sailor. Yeah, in like real life. A sailor. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So Let's like I make it. him blush sometimes. He's like, he'll look at me and be like, I can't believe you just said that. Like literally, what was it? I said, well, I can't say what we said the other day, but I said something and his little eyes just was like, what? Yeah, I sometimes you said that. That's sometimes really disgusting. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, that's it's descriptive. You get it. You get what I'm saying. He's like, yeah, but that was a lot. <laughs> it was unnecessary. So a lot of times he says that to me. Because I but, you know, talk about scripted. So, OK, so you want to start a channel. Um, there's a certain amount of scripting you need to do. You need to do um, my recommendation. And, and you know, if you do, if you're serious about a channel, then you're going to do your own research online. You're going to find the, the channels out there that that's what they do is focus on helping people grow YouTube channels. That's not what we do. You know, we have a little farming lifestyle, ranch, gardening, docu family follow thing. Uh, and every now and then we talk about the YouTube experience, but go and, you know, watch Daryl Ives and buy his book and read it and like really study all the things about, you know, researching a title, coming up with the title, learning what titles are more searchable. And which ones are less searchable? That's which, the part he nerds out on. I, right. I get what things I have. Just changing a few words in the title can make all the difference in whether you're not your video is successful. And if, um, and I think too, like if you're filming, like like if you're a couple, like a couple of what I don't know, but if you're a couple, <laughs> a couple of knuckleheads, um, figuring out whose strong suits are what, so that you can do this part and you can do this part and you can kind of make it meld together, like. I suck at coming up with the titles that that work for making the algorithms happy and all that. He's really good at nerding out on that. I'm good at like getting to the point and shooting what we need to shoot. He does, he has a very different technique than that. So, okay, let's say she shoots a video on I don't know, um integrating like new quail into the flock, right? She'll shoot the video. She'll do put her touch on it. She'll make some jokes. Uh, she'll fall down while she's walking through the yard. That won't be on purpose, but hopefully she'll catch it on camera. She'll do what she does, and she'll create a video. Right. And that video, now, now the, the challenge for me is, okay, what's going to make the thumbnail pop? Like, what about the thumbnail is gonna have some kind of a question mark to it or something. And then what's the title gonna be? And I'll go on TubeBuddy and I'll just start like putting keywords in and figuring out and I'll search, okay, you know, having to do with quail, <clears throat> what things are highly searched, but have low competition or vice versa until I come up with a title. And sometimes I'll do it the opposite way. Sometimes I'll come up with titles before I've ever shot any content and I'll come up with titles that seem to be really good searchable titles and, or I'll see something that is like doing really well on someone who I consider to be in the same genres channel. And I'll be like, what, 
I mean, we have goats too. What kind of a twist can we put on that idea, right? Um, so you never want to copy somebody else. But if you can figure out what about their video made it go viral, was it the thumbnail or was it the title or was it the way the thumbnail, you know, left a question and then the title reinforced that question and just made it like, I got to know, like whatever it is, find that thing. And then just go like, I have lists. I'll make lists of, of potential titles and then I'll figure out, okay, now what, what can I shoot that will work with that title, right? Um, so, I mean, the bottom line is do research, do a lot of research, nerd out on it, you know? Yeah, he likes to nerd out. I do not enjoy that at all. So, it's all good. It's all right. good. Anyway, so that's it. That's all we got. That's all you got to do. Get a camera and make content, right? There you go. You know? So, hopefully we answered a few of your questions. I know some of you guys were throwing stuff out there and it's, Sometimes it's hard to figure out where we are in chat and keep track. So forgive us if we skipped something or skipped over you. It was not intentional. It's just we're both old and it's hard to see the tiny screen far, far away. South, so. what is that? So Southern Paradise Investments or Investor? Thank you. I have no idea what just It was scrolling kind of fast, no. but uh, they said that they think our family is pretty cool. Notice how I didn't, um, I didn't gender them. I said they, because oh, I had no idea if it was a he or a her, yeah. he, he or her, a he or a she, or a whatever, fuzzy or, a, or a fuzzy. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we've been going down the rabbit hole. Okay, <laughs> and I've been oh, and I've been informed that I have to take Frankie to the store after our live tonight because she she needs something for her Valentine. She has Valentine. Apparently, we need to talk about this. I mean, like her friends, her Valentine friends at school. Like she, she waits till the last minute. Yeah, you don't have to get a a, a cameraman to cough. Uh, I, I'm saying that we would like to get to the point where we could get a cameraman. Um, I mean, the bigger channels out there. I mean, Mr. Beast. Those those of you who don't know who Mr. Beast is, an entire company, an entire crew, right? Um, I mean a lot of employees working for them. Um, but, you know, obviously the, the channel has to be able to pay for that. Right. Uh, and, and yeah, the goal should be always to be, to be, well, I mean, what, after all, what are we doing? We're creating content that needs to, in some way, entertain people. You Southern know? Paradise says that uh, he enjoyed the game show last year that I was on and that he's a guy. Thanks. <laughs> ah, there you go. Right on. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, you're creating content that needs to be quality content. And, you know, that's the area where we all struggle, right? We're always trying to get better at our content creation. But that's what it's 100% about is the content, the quality of the content. What's in the content is a given. Yeah, there has to be something in there. That's part of the definition of the quality. But, man... You know, your lighting, your camera angles, your editing. I mean, we are so far behind, you know, creators like Mr. Beast out there when it comes to that stuff, because we don't have the money to spend on production, on crews and, and you know, high end editing. But yes, that's the goal. We would certainly want, a, you know, a, want to achieve that. Right. Yeah. So that's it. That's our take on like, how do you do it and how, what you should be focusing on when you think about starting it. So thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. Thank you, Sam. I am $20 super chat this evening and we had come on homesteading and Mike and Terry from MT homesteading and full barn, full barn productions, Robin's buys and DIYs. Creepy Bushman. Creepy Bushman. Uh, two old people on a couch. Um, I think I got everybody. I think so. Anyway, I hope you guys all have a uh, really great weekend, a very nice Super Bowl if you celebrate that sort of thing. We don't. But. How many hours a week do we do we put a lot? How many hours a week um, between the shooting and the editing and the researching? I'll bet you it's 40 hours a week combined, maybe more. Do you think it's split 2020? No, I said combined. 
Uh, no, you do more than I do. That's why I was asking. I was I was trying to figure out like what you, you were think. fishing there. No, I didn't, <laughs> to see if I no see you it. you definitely do more than I do. Oh, I didn't see Whitney pop in. Whitney just texted me that she jumped in to say hi and that she loves us. I hey, get, I get to see you. Is soon, uh Whitney. is is Chad with you? I was actually texting him earlier today. Yeah. He sent me a picture of your house. It's so cute. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, there was some it's random so chick in the front yard in a bikini. <laughs> Wasn't you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button on your way out. And we'd appreciate it. And we will be posting another video on Sunday because we post every Sunday and Wednesday and go live every Friday. Ooh, do we give a spoiler about Sunday's video? There's heavy equipment involved and small children. There's a caterpillar. Yeah. Yeah, and small children. Yeah. <laughs> Squish. <laughs> <laughs>